the second and third chapter of the book of Revelation, John, by the Spirit, Jesus appeared, I believe, and showed John, by the Spirit, letters that were to be written to seven churches that were then uh, in existence in what we now call Asia Minor. And we go through this list of churches and the letter that uh, Jesus dictated each one. And we see something, we see each one of them, he addressed something that, uh, that, that he con commended them for. Then he addressed something that was corrective to each one. And then at, at the end of every one of them, in fact, let's look here in verse 7. This is Re Revelation 2. Look at verse 7. At the end of every one of them, he said this, He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Go to verse 11. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Verse 17 says the same thing. Uh, chapter 2, um, verse 29 says the same thing. Chapter 3, verse 6 says the same thing. Chapter 3, verse 13. Chapter 3, verse 22. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying unto the churches. I'm not going to teach as much, this as much this morning as I'm going to share what the Spirit is saying to Spirit of Faith Family Church about what just happened in these meetings. Amen. Amen. And so uh, notice that Jesus not only has a message for the church, but He has a message for each church. Amen. So there is a message. There's something the Spirit wants us to understand about what just happened in these meetings that we just had. Amen. And uh, so there's something, and then the reason, because the Lord has spoken some things to me. Uh, he spoke it to me, the first time He spoke to me uh, about this divine connection with the Roberts ministry. He spoke it to me in the Richard, whenever Richard Roberts was here himself back in May. Then afterwards, in seeking the Lord further, He spoke to me further about the purpose of this divine connection. And I want to share that with you because He didn't say it to me so I could keep it to myself. He said it to me so that I could share it with this congregation. In fact, He expressly told me to share it with this congregation. And He wants us to be, for the purpose of being in unity, in faith and in prayer about God's plan. Because this is not just my faith project about what God wants to do in eastern Iowa. This is our faith project. Amen. Amen. He wants me to share it so that we can be in unity. The Lord spoke to me back, uh, well, I don't have the date in front of me. I, I got all these things written down in some place, but... Uh, I would say probably more than a year ago, more may, maybe between between two and year and a half and two years ago, somewhere in there, he said, "I'm going to bring four men and ministers." Is what he's talking about. Four ministers, men. He, he said men, but I knew it was ministers into your life to uh, be divine connections going forward in your life. Of course, Pastor Nancy is our pastor, and that's the highest voice into our lives, and we hold that voice in the highest place. But yet right on the other hand, the Lord was dealing with me that He wants to do more and uh, there are others that He wants to use to bring a supply into our lives, our ministry, and also to this congregation. Amen. 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 How many of you know no, we're not an island to ourselves? We are a part of the larger body of Christ and we need to be open to divine connections. He describes some of the things uh, that... Uh, that, that the way that these relate, in other words, he described some of the characteristics of these relationships, what they would be like, and uh, different ones of them for different purposes. I'm not going to tell you who it all is this morning, except I'll tell you one of them that he did say it was. He told me all four of them who they are. But yet, right on the other hand, he's, he, Richard Roberts was one of them. Amen. That's why we're not just passive about this uh, uh, pressing into this relationship. That's why we, we treat the ministry the way we do. That's why we give it the voice that we do, because God has a plan in bringing these ministries into divine connection with Spirit of Faith Family Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to share with you some of the things the Lord has said to me about this connection, 
And uh, the first thing I'm going to share was what, what he said to me sitting in the meeting when Richard Roberts was here. Because this is something the Spirit is saying to Spirit of Faith Family Church. And we have ears to hear, right? We have ears to hear. And so we, we, want to, we want to share these things so that we can be in one accord and moving forward with what God wants to do in Eastern Iowa. When I was sitting in the meeting, when Richard Roberts was here in May by himself, Miss Lindsay wasn't with him that meeting, but when I was sitting in that meeting, the Spirit of God, just sitting here uh, receiving from his ministry, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said this. This is the first thing I want to share with you about this divine connection. He said to me, Iowa needs this ministry. Amen. 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 I said, I said, amen. amen. Well, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't vague. It was very clear. It rang through my inner being. And uh, it stood out to me that he said, Iowa. He didn't say, although we do, but he didn't say, Spirit of Faith needs this ministry. We do need it. I don't, I, I'm not saying we don't. I'm simply saying he's, he broadened whenever it came to the purpose of God. Because whenever I ask God, whenever, whenever he said, these, I'm going to bring these four men. Here, here's who they are. And I, and I said, uh, I said, God, I don't want to just know what you are doing. I want to know the purpose. Because the purpose is much bigger than anything personal about us. It's not, it's, God's plans are much bigger than you or me. God has a bigger purpose. Uh, Spirit of Faith Family Church has a bigger purpose than uh, just you or me. It's about the plan of God in eastern Iowa. And it stood out to me that he didn't say, uh, Spirit of Faith needs this ministry, referring to the Roberts ministry. We do need this ministry. I'm not saying we don't. You understand the way I'm saying it. I'm just saying he didn't just limit it to us. In other words, this ministry is not coming just to bless Spirit of Faith Family Church. There is a larger plan. I want to those two words, larger plan. Amen. There is a larger plan than just what we uh, at Spirit of Faith receive from this ministry. Say I'm getting it this morning. So he said to me, uh, Iowa needs this ministry. Now, I'm going to clarify why the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God uh, ex he explained to me after the May meetings what that meant. Well, at least part. I guess there's always more to understand than what we understand. But he explained at least enough that we need to know to put our faith on it. Yes. Yeah why he said to me, Iowa needs this ministry. And I'm going to share that more at the end, and, you'll, and, I'll, and I'll work up to it. But uh, the fact that he said Iowa st stands out to me. I want to, I want to talk to you this morning some about the history of, of the move of God and divine healing, the move of the Spirit in Iowa. I've been researching it. And uh, I'm going to ask somebody to become a Holy Ghost Iowa Church History uh, researcher. I need some help because I'm wanting to know some things, and I'm wanting to know what seeds have been planted here. And, uh, and, 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 and I don't really know some things, but anyway, I'll, I'll talk more about that as we go. But the, the history of revival, divine healing, the move of the Spirit in eastern Iowa, I have some information on it. I'll say this, the history of revival in Iowa is much more sparse than in some other parts of the country. Amen. Now you say, why are you switching from the Richard Roberts meetings to the history of revival? Hold on. <laughs> Amen. As far as I can tell, which I don't think this is a complete list, because uh, one meeting that uh, was made uh, known to us that happened here in Iowa, that is not on this list that I found online, 
uh, was in Oral Roberts meeting in 1953. Miss Yavona or Lavona Rich Richson. Rich, how, how do you say that? Rich Richman. Uh, that that lady. We put her testimony. Brother R Richard Roberts interviewed her in May in the back room. We put her testimony on Facebook. You remember that lady that was healed of a brain tumor? She said Richard. Ro I mean, uh, Oral Roberts came here in 1953, and she couldn't remember if the meeting was his crusade was in uh, Iowa City or Cedar Rapids. But, but she said, uh, I went to that meeting. I was the photographer for, I believe, the Gazette and WMT, I believe she said. Uh, forgive me if I got the wrong news stations. But she said, I was taking the pictures. But she said, I got in the line at the end because I needed healing of a brain tumor. And she said, oh, now this lady, I don't know how old she would, would be today. She visited in May and gave us this testimony. She looked to be maybe close to 80 or somewhere, maybe in her 80s, uh, somewhere late 70s or 80s. And so she said, 1953, she was healed of a brain tumor, and she's completely healed today. Amen. So we know of that meeting that happened in eastern Iowa. But, uh, and so I'm going to read a list of some others that historians have researched. Uh, but this must not be complete, because we just found out about that one in 1953. I would like somebody to help me do some research. I mean, go back into the Abundant Life magazine, which was Oral Roberts magazine, because Miss Yovona said her testimony was in the 19, one of the 1953 versions. Well, she was healed in 53. It could have been 54 that it was in. I don't know the date. But I would like to get some, get some stories about this. Maybe God will put that in somebody's heart right here. Let me rephrase that. God will put that in somebody's heart right here. <laughs> but um, this is some of the history that I know of. You're a part of this. I'll explain that to you a little bit more when we come to the healing, I mean, when we come to the charismatic revival. Because the Lord spoke to me about the charismatic revival in this city and told me there were some people in that revival that didn't move on and uh, they were in the room of the unlearned. Now those that sit here before you now are the ones I want to use to take forward my plan for the move of the Spirit in this city. Yes. You remember that? Yes. Of course you do. Yes. Of course I just reminded you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but listen to uh, some of the meetings that I know of. Now, I did some quick research. I was awakened. The Lord changed my sermon. I had a good sermon on faith and confession this morning. But at 420, what was it I woke up, 423 or something like that? The Lord changed my sermon. So if my eyes are going like this, it's because I'm still waking up. Um, but this is some of the uh, history that I know of. And... Uh, in, uh, night, in the 19, or actually the 1895-1896 area, 1895-1896, Miss Mariah Woodworth Eder did a major sweep through Iowa. Let me tell you where she was. Now, there's a couple other dates in here where she was in Iowa. Like here's one, 1891. But most of them are 1895, 1896. There's some 1820s that Miss Mariah was here. Um, but she was in Anderson in, in 1891. She was in Arthur. These are cities in Iowa in 1895-96. She was in Carroll in 1895-96. Um, Mariah Woodworth Eder was in Columbus Junction in the same years. Uh, there was a man named James Hick Moore Hickson. He was, he was out of, uh, I believe, Australia. No, no, that's a different one. I believe that he was out of England and came over. He was a mighty minister you don't hear much about, actually. That was in the 1920 area. He, she, Miss Mariah Woodworth Eder was in Davenport in September 1902. Uh, she was in Dedham, D-E-D-H-A-M, -D -E -D Dedham, in 85. Uh, this is not 1895 and 96. Uh, in Des Moines, there were meetings. Uh, There's only a few. Amy Simple McPherson, let me, let me back up. Uh, Mariah Woodworth Eder was in Des Moines in 1921. Amy Simple McPherson was in Des Moines in 27 and 28. William Branham was in Des Moines in 1954. So those are some major healing revivalists. Then also, uh, Tommy Hicks was in Eagle Grove in 1957. Mariah Woodworth Eder was in Glidden in 85, and this is 19, uh, 18, uh, 95 and 96. Uh, she was also in Grand River uh, in 1921. She was in Iowa City in 1895-96. She was in Lake City 95-96, of course, 1895-96. Then also she was in, Mariah was, was in Iowa City in 95 and 96. She was in Lake 
City also, same time. Lettersville, same time. Mason City, uh, Catherine Kuhlman was there in 1938. Anybody recognize these names? These are major healing, healing and revival ministries, major move of the Spirit kind of ministries. That was in Mason City, Catherine Coleman in 18, or excuse me, 1938. Uh, Mariah Woodworth Eder was in Merrimack in 1895-96. She was also in Mount Pleasant in, 80, uh, in that same time, 1895-1896. She did a major sweep through Iowa. Muscatine, she was also in 90, uh, 1895. And then also, again, in uh, several weeks in 2002 in Muscatine. That's just down here on the, by the Mississippi River. <clears throat> There's only one city in America called Muscatine, and it's, Iowa, uh, it's in Iowa. <laughs> then uh, Mariah Woodworth Eddard was in North Liberty in 1895-96. North Liberty, Iowa City. She was in Ottumwa in 1922. She was in Sydney in 1916. Sioux City uh, twice in 1907 and uh, 1920. Now, Storm Lake, Charles Price. Charles S. Price. You ever heard of Charles Price? He's got a good book out on healing. He was a part of the healing revival. He was here in... Uh, uh, he was here one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in Storm Lake, seven different times over seven years between 1935 and 1943. And then in Waterloo, Branham was there in 1958. Anybody notice a city I didn't mention? Amen. Cedar Rapids. Well, <clears throat> we don't have, uh, it must have been that Oral Roberts was either here or Iowa City, according to Miss Yvonne's testimony. I'd like somebody to go back and research that, please. If anybody gets that on your heart, let me know. And uh, don't come and say, well, I couldn't find it online. No, I want you to call Oral Roberts Ministries. I want you to go back and look for the archives of Abundant Life magazine. And I want to find out some of these things. Anyway, having said all that, everybody still with me this morning? Um, that was the, that was the, before the, that was actually uh, not long, at, well, actually, Mariah Woodworth Eder was right before the Pentecostal outpouring. Mariah Woodworth Eder had powerful signs and wonders. And she swept through here in that time frame, 1895-96. And then we see some others. We see Amy Simple McPherson. We see Charles Price. We see Branham. Branham, I believe, was in uh, Davenport and Des Moines. Um, but we don't see anything, in, much of anything, that we have record of in Cedar Rapids. Everybody still here? Well, that was the Pentecostal revival, even up through the healing revival. We don't have much record of much happening in Cedar Rapids. We come to the charismatic revival, and the charismatic revival hit Cedar Rapids pretty strong. That's the first that it really hit here. Everybody still there? I have record of some of the happenings in Cedar Rapids during the, uh, the uh, charismatic revival. It hit here pretty strong. And I'll tell you one reason why. The charismatic revival hit the Catholic church harder than anywhere else. Most people don't realize that. We hear the charismatic revival, and we know that people came, people got baptized in the Holy Ghost, came out of the Baptist churches, the Methodist churches, the Episcopalian churches, all the churches, and denominational churches, people getting baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that's true. It hit every denomination, but not near as strong as it hit the Catholics. Amen. And uh, so the, the revival hit uh, uh, Cedar Rapids real, pretty strong here. And there was a major, I won't get into all the names of the church and so forth, but there was a major church raised up here to uh, be used of God in the charismatic revival in Cedar Rapids. That church uh, tried to plant a church in each quadrant of Cedar Rapids 
uh, it, it succeeded to a degree, but um, the uh, thing was, God used some people here. Back in uh, 2008, <clears throat> one of the individuals that God used, one, one of the main individuals God used in that revival, in the charismatic revival, uh, came to Dr. Dufresne's meeting and attended the fresh oil that we had here. And actually, two of the leaders of that revival, the charismatic revival in Cedar Rapids, attended Spirit of Faith Family Church until they, well, actually, let, let me back up, uh, sort of attended, <laughs> depending on who you're talking about, attended here until they passed on. You understand? Uh, they recognized the place where God was moving in the city in this same way. Hello? And ended up attending here. Two of the other ones did not. But one of the, of the two that did not came here one or two times and was instantly and completely healed of a heart condition. And was all excited about it and said, this is what we had back in the charismatic revival. And uh, I said, uh, I said, I, I, I said, you need you belong in this church. I was bold. I said, we need your supply. This is not about you. This is not about us. It's about carrying this revival forward. And I said to the man, besides that, you need the word of faith. You need the message of faith. Because you need to keep your healing. You got a healing by the gifts of the Spirit, but you're going to have to keep it by your own faith. Well, he never followed through with that. Three weeks later, all the symptoms came back on him. The Lord spoke to me about a particular man that was a leader of the charismatic revival here because he came to Fresh Oil and wanted to come to some of our prayer meetings. He never actually ended up coming. But the Lord, the, the morning that I woke up to go to that prayer meeting, conduct that prayer morning meeting, which he never actually showed up, but, but he was going to, it said he was going to, um, the Lord, and while I was getting ready, spoke to me. And he said to me, hello, everybody still here? Uh, let's see here, I'm trying to uh, cut some of this out. He said to me, uh, they had a taste of the things of the Spirit, and they're hungry for it. And he mentioned these four men. I mentioned these four men without mentioning their names. They had a hunger for it. Uh, but they all got tripped up by the message of the word of faith. And he said, none of them will go with it. This is what he said to me in 2008. I said, Lord, why are you showing me this? He said, I want you to know who not to put in leadership whenever they, whenever they are here. Amen. He said, they're not qualified. He said, none of them are people of faith. And then he started talking to me about some of the things I just talked to you about. One of them came and was going to our healing class for a while and sat and, and, and uh, he said, I could get people healed in the charismatic revival. Anybody I lay hands on most was healed. But he said, I can't, my own wife here, she's sick and I can't get her healed. Came to the healing class for a couple of weeks and said to the person teaching the healing class, I don't understand what you're talking about. See, the message of faith. They didn't go on with the message of faith. They were all moving by gifts of the Spirit in the charismatic revival. When it came to the healing revival, none of them went on with it. Amen. Another one that attended here for a while said to, went to the healing class a couple of times and said, uh, and, and then was spoken to about believing God for their own healing. And they said, that's as much as you're going to say to me about that, isn't it? And was very defiant came to the healing class a couple of times and then said, I have all, I know all this, and then left. Well, didn't know it like they thought they knew it. Amen. I'm just telling you what the Lord said to me all proved out, that they didn't go on with the teaching revival, the, the, the message of faith. The message of faith teaching revival was not an end to itself. It is preparation for the church to get back into what was happening in the charismatic revival, but to be balanced word and spirit. What if you don't get a gift of the spirit? Thank God you've got the word. You can take the word, stand on the word. 
and we need to combine. God wants this era to be a word and spirit era, but it's not just word era. You understand? One of the things the Lord said to me, in fact, this morning when he was talking to me, he said, Iowa will not be reached just by the teaching ministry. And I'll tell you more about that. Are you out there? Are you going home? When I came to, uh, to, when Pastor Debbie and I came here to pastor in 2002, the last Sunday we were uh, in uh, our own home church in Rama, Rama Bible Training Center, in I mean Rama Bible Church in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Pastor Hagen called us out and, and said they're getting ready to leave and start a church, plant a church, and uh, we want to pray for them, lay our hands on them, send them forth. And so they called us up in front of the church that morning and laid hands on us and commissioned us, sent us out. And so afterwards, of course, then the whole congregation knew about it. But then afterwards, an usher at Rhema came up to me, and he said, I was in Cedar Rapids one time. I said, oh, really? I said, when was that? And he said, I used to travel with Brother Hagin uh, in the crusade department, you know, just helping in the helps ministry. And he said, Buddy Harrison booked a radio rally in Cedar Rapids. There was a, t there was a radio station in Cedar Rapids that had all the main ministers on and actually had rallies here in Cedar Rapids. Now that's something I need somebody to do some research on because I don't know much about it. All that I know is the man fell into reproach and had to shut everything down. I do know that. But, but he said, the usher at, at Ramah said, I was with Brother Hagin. We went there whenever Buddy Harrison, that's Buddy Harrison was his, Brother Hagin's office manager and son-in-law, and they booked meetings all across the United States. Wherever Brother Hagin was on the radio, or, or, or a lot of places, he's on the radio, they would go there when they would hold, get a hotel room and hold a meeting there. And, uh, so, and so forth and so on. So, but this man said, I was with Brother Hagin when we went to Cedar Rapids. He said, Brother Hagin had the meeting, had the, the radio rally meeting, and then went to Buddy Harrison and said, don't ever book me there again. <laughs> and that's where we're laboring. Amen. The Word of Faith revival was not received here. I'm just telling you different indications of it. It was not received here. Amen. Tell your neighbor he's preaching real good. We're, we're, we need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Huh? Get, keep listening and you'll hear. You'll hear what the Spirit's saying. Hallelujah. So, um, whenever it came to us coming here, one of the first experiences I had in the Spirit was I had a vision and I saw thousands of people in a room, just jammed into a room. And I saw the, the people uh, just, sort of, they're just sort of blank looks on their faces. They, they didn't seem to know. Uh, there was something about the vision that made me know they don't really realize what's going on in the Spirit. But... I said to the Lord in the vision, I saw the vision, I said, Lord, who are these people? And what is this room? He said, these are those that I began to move on into a greater way in Cedar Rapids. He might have said Cedar Rapids or Eastern Iowa, I don't remember. But I'm, I'm, I, th I think it was Cedar Rapids. I'd have to go back and look at my notes. But that I began to move on, and I, and I realized when he was talking, he's talking about the charismatic revival. That I began to move on in this city to move them into the greater things of the Spirit. And I began to move them out of denominationalism. And he said, and they were filled with the Spirit and began to learn about the things of the Spirit. But he said, they then went back into their traditional churches. And they're there now. And he said, they're in the room of the unlearned. And then he explained what that room was. And the Bible uses that term. Remember 1 Corinthians 14 talks about the room of the unlearned. Now he's not talking about people that aren't saved. He's talking about people that are saved, but they don't know about the move of the Spirit. They don't know about divine healing. They don't know about gifts of the Spirit. Or they knew about it and drew back. And these were those who knew about it and drew back. I'm, I'm getting up to why God's connected us with the, with the Roberts ministry. And I know you might think I got off. I have not got off. I'm, on the, I'm, on, I'm showing you what the Lord showed me this morning. So he said, uh, these are those who are now, they drew back from the moving of my spirit. They went back into denominationalism. And he said, they're now in the room of the unlearned. Well, they're there by choice. 
they by a with full knowledge of what God wanted to do and moving in his by his spirit in greater way drew back from that and would not come out of denominationalism so they're sitting in those churches today well that generation is beginning to die off but but you know what I'm talking about amen, amen. amen. and then he said to me because this was a a uh, uh, we, this was a service that the Lord that I had this vision in and uh, I saw this and then he said to me the, those that sit here before you now are the ones that I will use to, to, to take this move of the spirit that I desire to do in this city into the fullness of my plan Amen. Amen. huh we spirit of faith family church are a open door now, you might, I have to qualify this. You could think we're just talking pride here, but I'll qualify it. We are a open door to this city for God to move by His Spirit. Yes, sir. Now, somebody, somebody said, what about everybody else? Any believer can be an open door. Anybody. Anybody can be an open door. But we are ones that are hungry for it. And so we are the ones that God has in mind. Not because of favoritism, not because we're special, but because we're hungry for it. We are a gathering of people who hunger for the move of the Spirit. You understand what I'm talking about? And so uh, that was the charismatic revival. And then, and then uh, the, the, the teaching revival. I call it the teaching revival. People call it the Word of Faith revival. Faith is not a revival. It's how we live. But it was a teaching revival. What do you mean was, Pastor? Well, the revival part of it is over. Not teaching. Not walking by faith. That's not over. We live by faith. And we always teach the Word. Jesus went about the villages teaching, preaching, and healing. So, but, but, so, so teaching's not over. The revive, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, message of faith is not over. That's asinine. The just shall live by faith. If, if the message of faith is over, then we're all dead. Because we live by faith. <laughs> no, teaching's not over. The message of faith is not over. The revival of it is. It's not drawing the crowds like it once drew. People, you see... You're here in Cedar Rapids, and you miss the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, not in this church. But I'm talking about the revival of the, uh, the message of faith. You miss that part of it. You miss standing in line for three hours before the meeting and rushing in to get a seat. You miss that, where you couldn't get all the people in the building. You notice we can get all the people in the building here. Teaching's not over. Walking by faith is not over. But the revival of it is. Don't go out of here and make me say something I didn't say. That's obvious. Then after that, God tried to do some things. And Brian uh, Kirk knows a little bit more about this. But God tried to do some things in this city amongst the youth. I mean, well, Iowa. I should say Iowa amongst the youth. That's what, well... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just sharing as the Spirit allows me to share things. That got off. Brian knows why it got off. We've talked about it. But God had some plans in the city, uh, I, I say the city, in the state concerning the youth. That got off because of a couple of things, and I won't get into all of that. But what God is moving on, Brother Brian, concerning some of the things. You remember he was preaching here, what, two weeks ago on Sunday? Was that two weeks ago and he saw some things in the youth conference back was that a year before the year before was that 2018 youth conference youth youth uh, fit, huh? 17 he saw some things God showing him the plan uh, that that some others dropped yeah. Yeah. concerning his plan for the youth here yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. amen it's powerful I don't know how much of it you know but it's powerful God wants to pick up not, none of these things are God saying, well, we missed that. No, he's looking for somebody to pick it up. He's looking for somebody to pick up uh, the teaching of faith. He's looking for somebody to pick up the uh, charismatic revival. Somebody to pick up the healing revival. He needs some laborers. Well, I must keep on moving on. I don't know if you're uh, catching what the Spirit is saying 
I'm believing God that you will. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. So whenever the Lord brought the, the Roberts, especially whenever that first time Richard Roberts was here and he spoke to me and he said, Iowa needs this ministry, I began to see God's purpose for this divine connection. We talked with the Roberts at length on uh, two or three different occasions when they were here in the back room. And uh, I, I shared, we shared our hearts about what God's doing in our hearts towards them. They said similar things to us. And I said, I'm interested in the plan. I, have no, I told him, I have no personal agenda. I said, I know you need us to prove that more than say it. But I have no personal agenda as far as something I want out of you. I want God's plan. Are you all with me? So, uh, Iowa needs this ministry. Iowa will not be reached by the teaching ministry alone. Well, when the Lord said to me this morning, I will not be reached by the teaching ministry alone, interest, in, uh, instantly I thought about Jesus went about doing good uh, and healing all that were oppressed the devil. I thought about Jesus went to all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What's number three? Healing. That's the first verse that came up in my spirit. When the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, I will not be reached by the teaching ministry alone. He's trying to tell us that to get beyond these walls, reach people beyond these walls, it's going to take the healing ministry. And in a more broad sense, the move of the Spirit. Healing ministry is part of that. Are you hearing what the Spirit's saying? Iowa needs this ministry. But he's not just talking about the Roberts ministry. He's talking about the ministry of healing. Signs and wonders in the area of healing. Come on, I think you're getting it now. And so uh, we, we, uh, we have a real interest in con continuing this divine connection. On Wednesday night, I had a, some sitting there, and the Spirit of God said to me, whenever he's done, calls you up, and he says, uh, uh, turns it over to you, give an altar call. After the service... We went to the back, and he said, I was going to give an altar call, and the Lord said, no, don't. He's supposed to do it. Pastor's supposed to do it because the people need to respond to him as their pastor. Amen. Amen. Well, I didn't know the Lord said that, but the Lord spoke to me and said, give an altar call. And eight people, did you, no, seven, excuse me, seven people came up, rededicated their life. Amen. That's because healing is the dinner bell. Yes, yeah. Healing is the dinner bell. Healing draws people to Jesus. People that say, we don't need all that. That's all done away with. Well, they're not getting many people saved. Do you know how many people got saved in the healing revival and all these outpourings of the Spirit, charismatic revival, I'm talking about around the world? Many more than all the denominations were getting saved. In fact, they, they couldn't, the denomination couldn't hold a candle to it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Iowa needs this ministry. The Lord was saying that the healing ministry, and more broad, broadly, the move of the Spirit. I thought about the daycare this morning. The Lord said to me that the daycare was a children's healing center. Yes. Iowa needs this ministry. Yes. Hallelujah. And I saw something I'm supposed to do right here sitting this morning. I saw something I'm supposed to do during that greatest gift event. <laughs> Iowa needs this ministry. I'm talking about the healing ministry. Praise the Lord. Now, um, we are, the, uh, we are the, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but in Matthew 23, 13, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. Matthew 23, 13. He said, you shut up the kingdom of heaven before men because you don't go into the kingdom of heaven. So therefore, you can't lead them in others that are looking to you as spiritual leaders, you can't lead them in because you're not going in. Well, in other words, us going in, become, we become a doorway for others to get into some things. Yeah. 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 
You know, when Jesus was on the earth, he said, I am the light of the world. Then he, he said, I'm going to leave, and you are the light of the world. That's right. yes, sir. Jesus is the doorway to salvation, the doorway to God. No man comes to the Father except through him. We understand that. But if we don't go into salvation ourselves, there's going to be people that don't go in because we haven't made a way for them to go in. And we can't reach them with something we don't have. So whenever, yes, Jesus is the door to salvation, but when we go through that door, we become a door also for others to get in. Some of your family members are saved because you went in. Same thing with the move of the Spirit. Same thing with the move of the Spirit. When we go in, we make a way for others to get into things they would never have if we didn't go in. That's why I'm so against people getting light about the things of the Spirit and going back to places that don't move with the Spirit. You just shut the door. Yeah, but this is where all my friends are. It's not about you. It's not about your friends. It's about God's plan. It's about God's plan. It's about God's plan. Get over yourself. Don't shut the door on those people back there in that church. Don't shut the door on your family and your friends. Sure, they might persecute you, but when they need healing, guess who they're going to call? Guess who they're going to call? So we become a door. I don't know if you've ever read Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell are people that the enemy has access to the earth through. They are gates. They are doors. They are openings where Satan can get into the earth and do his thing. Satan can't do anything unless he uses people. God also. The Bible said in Psalm 24, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and lift, be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Psalm 24, verse 7 and 7, 8, and 9. And the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. Notice he said he comes in through gates. Well, we got to find those gates. Well, something I notice about the gates, they have heads. Lift up your heads, oh, you get. These are people. These are people. God gets his way done in the earth through people. And I'm just here to say, here we are, Lord. Here we are. Praise the Lord. So, and we can take a lot more time with that, but let me just say, regarding that, the Bible talks about the tribe of Issachar. They knew what time it was and what to do. They knew what to do. You ever read that passage? Guess what? What are we supposed to do when we know what time it is? When we know, see, the, the, uh, the time is for the move of the Word and the Spirit. What are we to do? Well, I believe what we're to do is pray. I heard somebody say recently, let's see, uh, somebody said, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. We could say this, much prayer, many signs and wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. Where's Brother Ethan? Where's Brother Ethan? Where are you at? Oh, he's on a camera. Oh, back there he is. He was healed in his jaw, right? Wave your hand. Healed in his jaw. That was prayed out in the prayer, in the prayer time whenever we got together on Monday before the, before the, before the meetings. What if we do more praying? We'll pray out these signs and wonders and miracles. And there were others. I actually prayed out that, that whole thing about the, the major part of the healings that happened on Sunday night of the Richard Roberts meeting, the Richard and Lindsay Roberts meetings, was backs and joints and so forth. Especially the backs and the vertebrae. I prayed that out on the Monday before the meeting. I'm not trying to take the credit. I'm just simply saying any one of us could and should be doing that on our regular Sunday morning services for, for Wednesday night services to where the Word starts getting out. And we fulfill the vision I had where there's stretchers lined up back there. Where it's so flowing, so strong, that the word gets out, okay, the doctor said there's no help, but I'll tell you where there is. Go down there to that church. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. And so this divine connection with the Roberts is to get us into that flow. 
Okay. Now, that's what the Lord said to me this morning. He said to me in May when Brother Richard Roberts was here by himself, the uh, Iowa needs this ministry. Now, let me give you some more, some more clarification of what he said to me after that meeting. And I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, share it with you by going to Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8. This is uh, one of the main, besides Jesus, of course, Jesus is the best example of any of the fivefold ministry offices in the New Testament. You realize that. But besides Jesus, this is the best example of an evangelist that we have in the New Testament. And Richard Roberts stands in the office of an evangelist. So let's look at some th something that the Bible says here about the evangelist. Let's start in verse 5. This is Acts 8, verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voices, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Notice, the evangelist ministry includes healing. And uh, casting out devils and so forth and so on. Now, look at verse number 9. But there was certain man... Uh, no, excuse me, excuse me, I missed verse number 8. Back up. There was... Uh, Many healed, lame, and palsy, and so forth. Verse number 8 is the one I want to get to. There was great joy in that church. Just saying the word, just hearing you say the word city burns inside of me. Notice the evangelist wasn't sent to the church. He was sent to the city. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got more insight after May's meetings when he was here. I got the Spirit of God woke me up on June the 1st and started talking to me further about, I told you I'm bringing four men into your life. Richard Roberts is one of them. And here's more understanding of the purpose. Understanding the purpose is how we can put our faith on it. And he said, this divine, this relationship that I'm putting together with you and, and uh, the Roberts is not just for the church. He said it's for the city. And actually, more broadly, he said, Iowa needs this ministry. Iowa needs this ministry. It's very interesting. <laughs> anyway, I won't go there right now. I, maybe I'll get to that. So he was telling me that his coming to our church was not the ultimate of the plan. You understand? He has God in his mind, in his great plan, and his, his, from, the, from, from, from making this divine connection, in his mind, the plan is much bigger than us. Yes. We got to get beyond ourselves. Us, I'm talking about us as a church. You know what I mean by us. So in God's mind, uh, there's a larger plan. Say that word, larger plan, larger plan. For them coming here. It's for the whole city and really the state. That's what the Lord said. I want you to preach this to the church. I want you to preach this to the church. Hallelujah. He's telling me that these meetings are seed meetings. You understand what I mean by seed meetings? They're the beginning of a larger ministry here in the area of divine healing and the move of the Spirit that goes beyond these walls. Y'all still with me? He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. I don't want you to hear just a good sermon. This really isn't a sermon. This is, saying, this is saying what the Spirit is saying to my heart about this divine connection. There are others. God said there was four. But this divine connection, I want you to be in agreement with the plan of the Spirit. And it's much bigger than us. Hallelujah. There's a divine something going on here. Hallelujah. 
There's a divine connection. They mentioned it. We mentioned it. I tried not to prod them into saying anything about it because I just wanted to hear what was in their heart. But in one of, the, one, of the back, one of the meals at the back room, Sister Lindsay stopped and said to everybody at the table, listen to me, everybody. There's such a kindredness in this room right now. Some of us ministers back there. There's such, some of you that were serving, you're witness. Anybody here that was serving that night witness, you, you heard it. Am I lying? There's such a kindredness in the spirit in this room right now. And things that they shared that are too precious to share. I don't believe I want to divulge because I don't want to divulge what they said in their heart. We're so precious to us that you just cherish it. I mean, they're sensing something's going on. Amen. I think you get a little clue of what happened on Monday morning. Go back and listen to some things that Sister Lindsay said. Was it, no, was it Sunday? No, I think it was, I think it was Monday morning. Hello? I don't want to just say it all. I want you to listen to what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Well, I'll say this part. She said there's greatness in this room. She wasn't talking about people. There is not a great man on the earth. There's not a great woman on the earth. But there are people that carry great things in God. I believe all of us carry something from God. But they were picking up some things about a connection for a plan which is much bigger than any of us. Amen. I don't know. I don't. Oh, praise God. This rings in me this morning. Hallelujah. This is not just another ministry here coming. This is a divine connection. God's building something. Amen. I believe there's going to be an ongoing relationship. And there's going to be more impartations. There's going to be uh, more demonstrations, more meetings of them coming. Amen? So, I'll say this, and somebody might get offended at this. That's their problem, but that's what the Spirit's saying. There's a new spiritual order in Iowa. Those that were unfaithful in the past, God looked and found somebody else. Amen? So, we've got to recognize who we are. I'm talking about we. Who, who we are. We've got to hear what the Spirit is saying. You've got to recognize this divine connection. I mean, you ought to recognize divine connections over natural relationships anyway. But I want you, I'm talking about this one this morning. You need to recognize who we as a congregation are, what we're planted here in the city for. We've got to recognize who the Roberts are and that they're, they're part of the plan. You have to recognize who we are and what our part of the plan is. None of us are great. I love, I love their heart about, they're, they're so, uh, oh, I like the way, I believe Brother Richard, maybe what Sister Lindsay said, we're going to all cross the finish line together. There's, there's not one big I and little you. Or any, but, but, but God brings these, these relationships for us to all finish our course and to bring a supply to one another. Amen. I believe it's to be ongoing. I believe we need them. God said so. I believe Iowa needs them. And I believe there's a new spiritual order. Eastern Iowa does not have much history of revival. But in our generation, this generation has the right to see the power of God. They have the right to see the power of God. Some people that God wanted to use got off. Either they got off or they weren't received. There are, there are plenty of that. There's plenty of that been here. So, um, we're God's door into a greater move of the Spirit in Iowa. I'm not saying nobody else can be, that God's, we're the only ones. Anybody can be. But how many of you know whenever you say, yes, here we are, then you become God's pick? You know, we could become uh, rejected just that quick also. So I'm not saying that in pride. I'm saying that in, we're, we're the ones that God has put his, remember whenever God said, remember the vision I had of the angel putting a, a, a light in the map? Ringy dingy. He's endeavoring to say, here's a place that I can move in, in my, by my spirit. The map was the places in the United States that were open to the move of the spirit. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Now, um, 
we need to believe God for this evangelist office to rise up in, in this city and in, in Iowa real strong. Amen? This city, Iowa, however far God wants us to take this. I, I mean, everybody's got a place. I don't know how far our place is, but uh, the, God wants, uh, you know, Iowa to know that the power of God's available somewhere. And I'm not talking about, you know, it gets out a little bit on Facebook and 2,000 people know about it. I'm talking about it gets in the news. You realize there's, there's a lot of people that still don't know about it. I'm talking about city shaking kind of things. To where there's joy in the whole city. Hallelujah. Let everybody know there's a place where the power of God's moving. And so this, these, the message of healing and the move of the Spirit needs to have a louder and louder voice. And the evangelist is part of that. Amen? That evangelist office is not called to a church. It's called to a city. That's what that's telling us. So I believe as we go further in this end time, there will be larger meetings, larger buildings, and more and more people... Let me, let me say it this way. There is, a, there is a hunger in people for the supernatural. Yes. Many of them don't know what they're hungry for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. But as soon as they see it, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's being uh, drowned out by liberal politicians and, and, and uh, secular news media and entertainment and distractions and and, and things that people get into to try to satisfy that hunger. But they need to see the power of God so they can find, that's what I'm really hungry for. That's what I'm really hungry for. Amen. And so I believe God is wanting to use this ministry to help us tap into a hunger that is lying dormant in people that they don't even realize is there. Do you remember whenever you were hungry for something and didn't know where to find it? Until you got connected to the move of God. There's multitudes. I believe there's multitudes more like that in Iowa. Well, what are we down here for? Just to uh, be blessed and have our car paid for and have a nice house and so forth? Those are all side benefits. That's not the main purpose. That's just uh, gravy for the train for the train ride. You know what I'm talking about? But the real purpose we're here is for the move of God and reaching people. Amen. 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 And so we need the evangelist ministry today just like we needed it or they needed it back in the book of Acts to shake cities. Amen. Iowa will not be reached by the teaching ministry alone. That's what the Spirit said to me. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means... Well, the teaching ministry establishes believers, grounds them in faith, makes them stable, and, uh, and, and establishes them so they can keep what they get in the evangelist meetings. Jesus didn't say that we don't need the teaching ministry when he said, I will not be teach with the, uh, reached with the teaching ministry alone. He didn't say we don't need it. He was saying we need more than that if we're going to really reach the state. Am I making any sense? So we've got to go further and further. And as the end days grow closer, I believe there's going to be larger and larger meetings. This, the, having them here in, in our church is a seed meeting. These are seed meetings. We're getting started. But it's only the beginning of something that God's, that God's, God's plan is larger than just these meetings. Am I making any sense? So we're glad they're here, but there's something bigger that God wants to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, um, what is a seed? It's something that's small, but when it's watered, it grows and becomes great. Isn't that right? Uh, last night I was studying, and I heard this, vroom, 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 getting louder and louder and louder. And I'm like, what is going on? Sound like something's coming right toward the place we live and get ready to push it over or something. 
it got louder and louder. And I went to the back window, and there's a, there's a cornfield behind our house, behind where we live right now. And, and a combine was coming past, combining, taking that corn down. Well, he's, 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 he's cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. But it all started with little seeds. Amen. I'm looking for Eastern Iowa and Iowa to hear rah, 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 rah. The combines are coming in. <laughs> Spirit of faith been planting the seed, watering the seed, planting the seed, watering the seed. Hallelujah. It's time for the combines to come out. Well, we've got to start somewhere, though. And that's what we're doing. We're getting this thing started. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when a seed is planted and the ground is prepared and uh, made, made uh, fertile and then watered, it begins to grow and becomes greater than it originally was, many times greater than it originally was. And so what, what, uh, what we're doing here at Spirit of Faith, if I could be so bold as to say it, can you, can you handle it? Yes. It's like uh, the widow woman and the other uh, woman there that made a room for Elijah and Elisha and made a room for the prophet to come in. In this case, it was a prophet. I'm talking about the evangelist office. But made a room for the prophet to come in and operate there. So we're making a room for this ministry to come in. I, I didn't get an exact count. I'm estimating somewhere around 70 testimonies of healing throughout this meeting that we know of. Praise the Lord. Doesn't take for long for that to keep on getting out, get word, getting the word out. You realize we have healings here at Spirit of Faith all the time, but most of it is through the teaching of the word and uh, the laying on of hands. But we have a healing ministry as well. But, uh, but there are voices in the body that can help reach larger crowds. And we need to make that room for that voice to come in and speak not just, to our, not just to our church, but to our city and our state. Amen. Can you, get, can you understand what the Spirit's saying this morning? So these, word, these meetings are seed meetings, but they're going to grow. That's God's plan. It's, gonna, it's starting small, but I believe it's going to grow. And in the years to come, there'll be larger and larger meetings. I really believe there's a cry in the hearts of people in this area for the power of God. They don't know what it is that they're hungering for. Amen. And whenever it is manifested, they run to what they know. They, they find, uh, finally, they realize, that's what I'm hungry for. Amen. There are things that are trying to squash that cry, to distract them from that cry. There are voices telling them, no, this is what you want. This is what you need. Another affair, more drugs, more this, you know, more money, whatever. And it's still not satisfied. But if, when they see the demonstration of the power of God, they go, oh, that's what it is. That's what I'm really hungering for. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I believe God said, uh, I'm bringing four relationships into your life. This is one of them. The, the Iowa needs this ministry, and it's to help reach our city, our state. Yeah, Can you understand now what I'm talking about? There's not much history in eastern Iowa of revival. But that doesn't mean there won't be. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I believe the Roberts are an integral part of it. I believe we're a part of it. I believe there's others in this city, others in other cities in Iowa that will get in on this. But somebody's got to plant the seed. Somebody's got to break the ground open. Somebody's got to do the hard work. And God found an old, you know, plow mule in Pastor Debbie and I. I won't say, I won't say old. How about plow mule? How about? And we're willing to do the hard work so that the will of God can be done. I said, so that the will of God can be done. Can you hear what the Spirit's saying this morning? Can you see it's bigger than us? Praise the Lord. I believe it'll come to pass, what we saw, stretchers lined in wheelchairs. It was stretchers and wheelchairs lined up along the back. Those seats weren't back there. That was the place for the, for the wheelchairs and stretchers. And 
things like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all coming to pass. It's all coming to pass. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Stand up with me. Say glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I'm talking about arms growing out kind of thing. I'm talking about eyes that can't see, see, deaf, hear, cripples jumping up and walking. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for us to lift up our eyes on the harvest like Jesus said. The Lord said to me one time, he said, um, you're going to have to be willing for some different kinds of people to come in. I don't mean ministers. I'm talking about people from this city that don't look like us, don't dress like us, don't smell like us. <laughs> come on. But they're hungry. Said they're hungry. And they're welcome. I said they're welcome. They're welcome because they're hungry for the same thing we're hungry for. They're hungry for the power of God. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and give God some thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.